In this tutorial it is shown how to use the HCSR04 module with the Arduino Uno. This module has a transmitter that sends out burst signals with a frequency of 40,000 Hz. A signal with such a frequency is not audible by humans, as humans are only able to perceive signals up to a frequency of about 20,000 Hz. Sound with a frequency greater than the upper limit of human hearing is called ultrasound. The module features also a receiver, which captures the burst signal which was sent out by the transmitter. A signal can be captured by the receiver, for example if it is reflected by an obstacle. Therefore, the module is well suited for applications related to distance measurements. According to the specification, the module supports measurements between 2 cm and about 300 cm. So in the next minutes you learn how to implement distance measurements utilizing this module. So how to connect all the parts together. So here I make use of a mini breadboard so that if I mount the ultrasonic module on the breadboard that it stands upwards. Then the module has four pins. The left outer pin is the VCC which I connect to the 5 volt pin of the Arduino Uno. Then the right outer pin is for the ground. And then the left inner pin is called trick for trigger. And this pin is used to give a command to the module that the module can now send out the burst signal. And I connect it to digital pin number two here. And the right inner pin is the echo pin, which is used to capture the signal. And this is connected to the Arduino's pin number 3. So that's it. To give you a better overview, I show you also the fritzing file. So here we have our Arduino Uno. Here is our ultrasonic module. And here are the four pins. So we connected the VCC pin to the Arduino's 5 volt pin. Then the right outer pin was the ground, which is connected to the Arduino's ground. Then the left inner pin is the trick or trigger pin, which was connected to the Arduino's digital pin number two. And the right inner pin, the echo pin, was connected to the Arduino's digital pin number three. So we have two variables for the pins. One variable is for the trigger pin and the other variable is for the echo pin. And then we have a variable to store the duration. In the setup function, we set the pin for the trigger to output mode and we set the pin for the echo to input mode. Moreover, we open up a serial connection, which we'll use later to print out the distance values. In the beginning of the loop function, we set the trigger pin to low for 3 microseconds and disable all interrupts, because we do not want that the interrupts interfere with the measurement. Then we want to send out a command to the module that it can now send the burst signal. So the burst signal is sent if the trigger pin goes from high to low. In addition, the high signal must be at least there for 10 microseconds. So next we want to measure the round trip time, which is the time from the transmitter to an obstacle and then back from the obstacle to the receiver. To get the round trip time, we read the echo pin and here we make use of the pulse in function. So if the second parameter of the pulse in function is high, then the function waits for the pin to go high, starts timing and then waits for the pin to go low. And this is exactly how we get the round trip time from the module. 
Next we want to obtain the distance in centimeter from the round trip time, which is in microseconds. First we divide the duration by 2, since we are only interested in a one-way distance. Then we have to multiply the one-way duration with the acoustic velocity of air. Unfortunately, the acoustic velocity is dependent on many things. A good estimate is a velocity of 343.5 meters per second, which is the acoustic velocity at a temperature at 20 degrees. Since the one-way duration is in microseconds and we want to have centimeters, we multiply the value of the one-way duration by 0.03435. What we get is the distance in centimeter. As a last step, the distance is printed out. And here I added a delay of 500 milliseconds in order to increase the readability of the serial monitor. Okay, so I uploaded a code and place now an obstacle with a distance of 15 centimeters relative to the module. And as you can see, the serial monitor shows also an output of 15 centimeters. If I change the distance, also the serial monitor shows the new distance. The measurements are not perfectly accurate, but considering the low price of the module, it's very acceptable. Next, I move the obstacle a little bit to the right relative to the module, and as you can see, very quickly the measurement becomes unstable and at this position the module can't detect the obstacle anymore. Okay, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and see you maybe next time.